Have you ever looked to the sky and seen a beautiful radiant red star? And then proceeded to think that the reason the star is so red is because your deity of war made his way to the star and slaughtered all of his enemies so that their blood forever stains the surface? Well, that's what the Romans thought, and that's also why the red planet is named after their god of war, Mars. We have since moved away from that thought, and now see Mars as a beacon of hope, a stepping stone to begin the colonization of our solar system. In Destiny, we started on that journey, and that led to the discovery of the Traveler on Mars, and the beginning of our Golden Age. After the collapse, Mars returned to its pre-Golden Age state, a barren wasteland incapable of harboring life. With all the history that's happened on Destiny's Mars, can we still connect it to our real Mars to make the location believable? Now as I've previously said, Mars appears as a bright red star in our sky. Unlike Venus, it can be seen all night when visible since it is further from the sun than we are. Now when we make our way to the surface of Earth on Destiny, there aren't any red stars in the sky. Mars cannot be seen from Earth. However, if we travel to Earth's moon and follow the barrel of the giant supply gun or whatever that is, in the distance we can see a bright red star. Upon closer inspection, the star takes shape, and we can see the red planet in all its glory. The view we have here is similar to how early astronomers saw Mars when looking through their telescopes. It's kind of hard to discern anything, isn't it? After all, it's just a washed out blob of red on the end of our scope. However, in 1877, Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli, I'm pronouncing that wrong, claimed he found canals on Mars which were confirmed by later observers. He even made a map of them. Waterways on Mars? We've got to go check this out. Think of the possibilities. If water flowed on Mars, then it's possible that life could... Huh. It's a desert. Hmm. Disappointment aside, it was just a desert that Schiaparelli was seeing. The canals he saw were just an optical illusion caused by the combination of the crudeness of the telescope he was using and surface features like craters blending together to form lines. While we're here, let's talk about all this red dust. Mars is covered head to toe in a powdery regolith, which is a fancy way of saying soil. This soil has iron materials in it and this iron has rusted which gives the planet its scarlet hue. Some of this soil is extremely fine, and sometimes Martian winds can pick up the dust and create dust storms. These storms can be small storms that last a few minutes or gigantic storms that cover the entire planet. While there aren't any of the legendary planet-wide dust storms in Destiny, imagine that as a public event, we can see evidence of the storms as inside the ruins of the buildings, there are piles of dust all over the place. Now this area that we play in in-game is called the Meridian Bay, which is an actual location on Mars. In fact, it's where the Mars Opportunity rover was sent to gather analysis on the planet. This area is mainly a flat plain which made it a great landing spot for the rover. In Destiny, the Meridian Bay has changed a bit. There's the ruins of the city of Freehold close by, and also Cabal encampments. Also, the terrain isn't as flat anymore as it has wind-swept dunes all over, probably an effect of having a city and military bases built near the site. But Mars isn't all flat or covered in dunes. In fact, Mars has some of the tallest mountains and volcanoes in our solar system. In the Western Hemisphere, there's a volcanic plateau named the Tharsis Plateau. On the plateau, there are three giant shield volcanoes named Arceamons, Pavonis Mons, and Ascraeus Mons. And together, they are known as the Tharsis Montes. But they pale in comparison to the largest volcano, Olympus Mons, which is three times the height of Mount Everest. Now we can't see these volcanoes in-game as the Tharsis region is many miles from the Meridian Bay, but we can see some shiny knockoffs. However, the Lost City of Freehold is connected to the Tharsis region. How? Well, down below the buried city, there's an abandoned train station. This station is named the Tharsis Junction, and using the wondrous marvel of bullet trains, transported passengers from the Meridian Bay to the Tharsis region. 
It's possible that humanity built an observatory on the volcanoes of the Tharsis region. Through the lens of the telescopes they had, they could view the universe from a different perspective than they've had. From Mars instead of from Earth. One of the first things they likely studied were the moons of Mars. Phobos and Deimos are two little, irregular shaped objects trapped in Martian orbit. And by little, I mean little. Phobos is only 17 miles across at its widest, and Deimos is even smaller, only 10 miles across at its widest, compared to our moon, which is 2,160 miles across. These moons are visible in Destiny. When you look to the Martian sky, we can see Deimos and Phobo. Whoa! That thing is huge! It should be called Wobos! Isn't it supposed to be smaller than our moon? Why does it look so big in the sky? Well, in-game, the Cabal dramatically altered the orbit of Phobos, bringing it closer to the surface of Mars. Phobos was already close to the surface of Mars, about 5,800 miles away, and the Cabal brought it even closer. Now, the burning question in my head was, how much closer did they bring Phobos? Well, after some digging, I found the equation to use to solve this problem was Kepler's third law of planetary motion which basically says the time it takes a body to orbit something is proportional to its distance. Now the equation looks a little daunting, but once we start to break it down, it isn't so bad. T is the time it takes Phobos to make one orbit around Mars. R is the radius of the orbit, which is what we're trying to solve for. 4 and pi are pretty straightforward. M is the mass of Mars, which leaves G, which is the gravitational constant of gravity in the universe. Now we can start filling in what we know. The mass of Mars is 6.4185 times 10 to the 23rd power. And the gravitational constant, after a quick trip to see my friend Google, is negative 6.67384 times 10 to the negative 11th power. 4 and pi are pretty easy, and all that's left is t. To find t, we need to time how long it takes for Phobos to orbit Mars in-game. But there's one problem. Phobos doesn't revolve around Mars. So, we need to do some creative thinking to solve this problem. Now, most moons are tidally locked, which means that they revolve at the same speed that they rotate, so that the same face always points towards the orbited body. For instance, when we look to our moon, we always see the same side of the moon, no matter if it's a crescent, half, or full moon. Now when we look to focus on Mars, it doesn't revolve, however it does rotate. Since Phobos is tidally locked to Mars, we know the speed of this rotation is the same speed as its revolution. Watching Phobos, it takes about 7 minutes for it to rotate, but we need to use seconds for our equation, which gives us an amount of 420 seconds. Now with time filled in, we can solve for the distance. Provided my math is all correct, which it very well may not be, it's been a while since I flexed these parts of my brain, we get a distance of 1,239 kilometers, or 770 miles. Phobos's natural distance is 9,389 kilometers, or 5,826 miles, which means that the Cabal brought Phobos 87% closer to Mars. But wait, I hear some of you say, time flows differently in Destiny, so you can't use Phobos' in-game rotation. To which I say, you're right. A day on Earth takes 24 hours, and a day on Earth in Destiny takes about an hour, which means a day in Destiny is about 4% as long as a normal day. If we take Phobos' rotation time, divided by 4%, we get how long it would take for Phobos to rotate naturally at the distance it's at, which is 10,500 seconds. When we recalculate using this as the time, which could still be wrong, we get a distance of 4,927 kilometers, or 3,062 miles, which means the Cabal brought it 47% closer to Mars. But wait, I hear an even smaller group of you say, Gravity across all the locations is the same, which means you can't use Mars' mass and have to find the real mass. And that is also correct. But what is the mass we should use? Well, that's a little complicated, but let's start with what we know. 
Gravity across all the locations is the same, since when we jump on all the locations, the height reached is always the same. We also know that the gravity in-game is weaker than on the real Earth, since the height of our jump is higher than the height of human characters. The average height for men, provided that the Traveler just extended our lifespans and didn't alter our biology or height, is 69 inches or about 1.8 meters. And the current world record for vertical jump is 55 inches or 1.4 meters, much shorter than the height of the average man. Now since the relationship between jump height and gravity is linear, we can find the difference in height between our jump in game and the highest jump recorded and use that number to measure the gravitational difference in the game. Stacking the speaker on top of himself for reference, our Guardian's jump is about 8 feet or 2.44 meters, which is about 43% higher than the highest recorded vertical jump, which means gravity is about 43% weaker, meaning the mass of Earth is about 43% smaller in-game, giving us a number of 3.40404 times 10 to the 24th power. Substituting this number into our equation, gives us an answer of 8,593 kilometers, or 5,339 miles. Only about 8% closer to Mars. I wish I hadn't made those shirts, because it seems like Wobus ain't cutting it anymore. But anyway, we've got three answers, and depending on your preference, any one could be right. But they leave one question unanswered. Just how big does that sucker in the sky look? Well, if we wanted to find the apparent size of Phobos, all we need is its size and distance from Mars. And we've got those, so why not? Now, the number we're solving for is called the angular size. So the answer won't be in inches, feet, or meters. The answer we get will be in degrees, which sounds a little confusing, but it all makes sense in the end, just trust me. So the equation we'd usually use to solve this problem had like arc tangent and stuff, and as I said before, it's been a while since I flexed these parts of my brain. So I looked for a simpler way to find the number, and we got a new equation. Theta equals 57.3 degrees times the diameter of Phobos divided by its distance, where theta is the angle we're solving for. Popping our numbers in there, we get answers of 1.26 degrees, 0.32 degrees, and 0.167 degrees. For reference, the size of our pinky is about 1 degree, so even at the closest distance we calculated, Phobos should only be as big as our littlest finger. I know, disappointing right? Phobos is already practically standing on Mars's doorstep. How much closer does it have to be to appear that large in the sky? Well, we can use some super reliable science and use the fist of our guardians to approximate the angular size of Phobos, which is about 15 degrees which puts Phobos at a distance of 104 kilometers, or 65 miles away. 65 miles? There's no way that is safe. The asteroid that killed the dinosaurs is predicted to be a third of the size Phobos is, and that wiped out most of the life on Earth! What could something three times the size of that asteroid do to a planet like Mars, which is half the size of Earth? Well, it's not as uh, catastrophic as it seems. Phobos is indeed spiraling towards Mars, and is due to make an impact sometime millions of years into the future. But, before it can impact Mars, Phobos will pass something called the Roche Limit. The Roche Limit is the closest a moon can get to its planet before literally being torn apart by the gravity of the planet. And that poses a problem for Destiny's Phobos. It's past this limit. Our calculations have put the moon as close as 104 kilometers or 65 miles, and as far as 8,600 kilometers or 5,300 miles. The Roche limit for Phobos is about 7,000 kilometers or 4,300 miles, which means that a hanging massive rock in the Martian sky shouldn't be there. Instead, we should have a view similar to Saturn, a ring of debris circling the red planet as Phobos was torn apart by gravity and became a planetary disk. Whew! Maybe I should have changed the name of this video from Destiny's Mars to Destiny's Phobos. Who knew you could get so much information from a video game? Now the House of Wolves will release a Crucible map on Phobos, which wasn't released yet at the recording of this video. 
There may be a part two of this video with information from the Crucible map, but I'm not making any promises. Now, Phobos aside, Destiny's Mars actually holds up pretty well to its inspiration. Both are sweeping red desert scapes with two moons that appear bright red in our sky. That red dot in our sky is a symbol of hope for both Guardians and those of us in the real world. It will be a stepping stone for our exploration of space. NASA actually has a timeline of missions that plans to launch a manned mission to Mars in the 2030s. If successful, those people sent to Mars will live there for the rest of their lives, as there's going to be no way for them to come back. They will be the ones to create a new chapter in human history. I think the craziest thing about sending people to Mars is this. Eventually, someone will have a child, and that child will be the first Martian in human history. Chew on that for an outro. Thank you for watching!